This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. A wedge-tailed eagle has been found dead at Richmond after a suspected power line strike. TAS Networks today confirmed to Southern Cross News at least 13 of the endangered birds were electrocuted in the last financial year. But says short of moving the entire grid underground, the issue can't be avoided. And a warning, this report contains distressing images. An 18-month-old wedge-tailed eagle reduced to this. The acrid smell of burnt feathers fills the room as wildlife biologist Nick Mooney shows us evidence of a fatal power line strike. My thinking is it's arced from here through the body and out here. It was found here on Fingerpost Road near Richmond yesterday. It had fallen under a set of power lines. It looks like the bird had almost certainly hit one power line and because they're big Heavy birds carried into a second or a third one, tumbled over them, electrocuted, fell to the ground. TAS Networks today confirming this isn't an isolated case. Last financial year we're aware of 13 wedgetail eagles that were electrocuted, uh, which is obviously very concerning for us as a business. The incident is a blow for wildlife rescuers after the weekend's successful release of a white-bellied sea eagle south of Kettering. It took 12 months to nurse that back to health after another power line strike. We've got some quite old-fashioned infrastructure um, that, that, that could certainly be improved in many places and reduce this risk. TAS Network says short of moving the electricity network underground, the problem can't be eliminated. We have a threatened bird strategy in place that has three parts to it. One is to build knowledge and awareness. Secondly, reduce the risk of our network itself through mitigation. And finally, to voluntarily offset our impact through sponsorship of various sanctuaries. There's uh, maybe 350 pairs in the state and they're struggling from this continual accidents. Um, fortunately, persecution has dropped, but these accidents have picked up. The female was yet to start breeding, and now it's just another lost hope for this endangered species. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. A spate of vandalism and reckless behaviour on the state's train network in recent weeks has sparked a united response from Tasrail and police. A new partnership will escalate efforts to stop illegal activity through information sharing and an awareness campaign. A train approaches the Drummond Street level crossing in Perth. Up ahead, a driver slows down, has a quick look and then hits the accelerator. The act of idiocy just won in a recent run of bad behaviour. In the past six weeks, uh, we've seen almost half of the full previous year's number of incidents in that, in that period. Another recent case in Olveston, a young child is pushed in a pram along a bridge. An adult waves at the train as it goes past, seemingly unaware they're trespassing. Now there's a new alliance between Tasrail and police to stamp out the problem. Raise the profile, get the evidence and take the, take the action, which, which is against a, what we think is a small number of individuals. CCTV sharing will be streamlined and there will be more teamwork when identifying suspected culprits. The main focus will be on the northwest, where nearly three quarters of these incidents occur. Since July last year, 49 level crossings have been vandalised and there have been 51 reports of trespassing. The illegal activity tends to spike around school holidays. I know our drivers literally on the, are on the edge of their seats as they go through certain towns. The initiative is being launched as part of Rail Safety Week. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. Police say they've arrested another person in relation to perverting justice in a notorious murder case. Police allege a man provided false evidence in relation to an application by Susan Neil Fraser to appeal her conviction for murdering Bob Chappell. He'll appear in court at a later date charged with perverting justice. Police say further charges may be laid. The hearing relating to the death of a minor who was caught up in a mud rush has begun in Burnie. 53-year-old Michael Welsh was killed on the lowest level of the Mount Lyle mine in January 2014. Jessica Moran has more details from court. The first day of proceedings has been dominated by legal arguments over where the hearing should be held, with the prosecution saying more should be held in Hobart than in Burnie. Magistrate Chris Webster ruled the case would begin in Burnie, then a number of experts would give evidence in Hobart, with proceedings finishing back in the northwest. 
Copper Mines of Tasmania faces one count of failure to comply with a health and safety duty, Category 2, relating to Mr Michael Welsh's death. CMT pleaded not guilty to that charge in November last year. Mr Welsh's death came about a month after the deaths of two colleagues at the Queenstown mine, Alastair Lucas and Craig Gleeson. They died after the wooden platform they were working on underground collapsed. The pair then fell more than 20 metres. The court heard the mine is currently in care and maintenance mode, with talks currently underway to reopen it. The hearing is expected to run for the next five weeks, with proceedings to resume tomorrow. Tasmanian social services say they'll be using the upcoming state election to push the issues that affect the vulnerable in our community. TASCOS says the campaign should be about fixing long-term issues rather than about scoring short-term political points. For the second day in a row, the government is out selling its pitch for a next term. On cost of living pledging to cap price increases for government services at or below inflation for four years. Things like um, car rego, um, uh, the cost of national park passes, bus fares, um, driver's licences and other licences that people um, might need in regards to, to boats or firearms etc. Standing next to the Treasurer, Taz Koss welcomed the commitment, but is also urging parties to think long term with more investment in social infrastructure. We have to be really careful not to get drawn into short term political wins, but to say what is in the long term benefit of Tasmanian families and Tasmanian communities. Labor says the government's promises are too late. What we've effectively seen from the government in the last couple of days is they're putting out this 43-point plan uh, and saying that uh, government really starts now. Well, it, it really does beg the question, what has Will Hodgman and this government been doing for the past three and a half years? Parliament returns tomorrow, with topics this week to include the Taswater takeover and a report tabled into the government's push to lower the voluntary school starting age. We think this is uh, not a very good policy. We think uh, the Tasmanian people don't support it and so we'll be uh, raising that issue yet again. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. Business owners at one of the state's most visited national parks say they're concerned failing infrastructure could see tourist numbers nosedive. Mountfield National Park experienced an influx of visitors over the weekend, but many were left stranded due to a closed road. This is fast becoming one of the state's most booming tourist destinations. But on what was meant to be one of the busiest weekends of the year on the slopes, the road was blocked. It was the first opening of the, uh, the ski toes yesterday and unfortunately the road wasn't ready to be opened until after lunch. Hundreds of adventurers stranded on Lake Dobson Road for hours because of this landslip and only one snowplow to clear the road. Local business owners concerned if it happens again, tourist numbers, which are up 30% from last year, will take a hit. We had people who said they were thinking of going to Ben Lomond but decided to come to Mount Field because it was closer. They waited three hours and then said this is rubbish and turned around and went home. We talk about the visitor economy and, and driving Tasmania and then we have things like this. We've all been waiting for the snow for the ski toes to open and then we couldn't get this. Long term staff here at the park say the problem has been getting progressively worse over the last four years. They're calling on the state government to provide more funding to improve the infrastructure. Yesterday was, um, was an act of God. Uh, it was a landslip. Um, the, it's not as a result of a lack of road maintenance or, um, or investment in that particular area. There is more snow expected to fall later this week. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Now let's take a look at the day's finance, thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed higher after weak US inflation figures dampen prospects that the US Federal Reserve and other central banks will raise interest rates later this year. The ASX 200 index has risen by 37.3 points. And a short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 78.87 US cents and 107.89 New Zealand cents. After an injury-plagued season, Hobart City Demons' favourite son, Kane Richter, has announced his playing retirement from TSL football. Richter has played an integral part in the club's development over recent years and calls it quits as one of the most well-regarded figures in Tasmanian football. 
unselfish on and off the field, today's press conference was no exception. <laughs> it's not about me, Coops, um, but no, I won't be playing next year, no. After a knee injury ended his 2017 season, Richter recently made the tough call following a long and impressive football journey. Moved down from Queensland as a 16-year-old and playing some tack cup footy with the Mariners and then uh, in the full-time Mariners uh, program and then had the opportunity to play some uh, some Devils footy over the, the journey with the with the VFL side. Played in a premiership under Brendan Bolton in 2003, which was a, a highlight of mine. And in recent years, Richter has been the backbone of the Hobart City Demons program. Keynes, you know... Yeah, I suppose it's a cliche, the spiritual leader, but you know he's our coach, he's our player, he's who we look to, he's who we, we play for. Currently both the club's head coach and general manager. He remains undecided if he'll coach again next year. Yeah, look, I, I haven't actually made the choice between sort of admin and, and coaching yet, and I probably need to. And while the Ds have fallen short of finals, the young group have managed to notch up two more wins than last year, with one game left to play against the Tigers. So what Richter does know for certain is he wants to be a part of the club's development into the future. The TSL is becoming a, a really uh, a strong competition as we go forward. Um, we've got to continue as clubs to, to provide environments where people want to come and want to be and want to stay. You know, footy's a great tool for life and, um, and it's taught me a lot. Now to this week's votes for the RACT Insurance Player of the Year in the TSL after round 19. With only two games this round, Josh McGuinness shone from the back line for the Bombers against Hobart City Demons with Alex Hill and Bryce Walsh rounding out the votes. And no surprises in the Blues clash with the Pies with Launceston's Brody Palferman named best on ground continuing his stellar season. To the leaderboard and with just two rounds to go, Glenorchy's Jay Bowden sits one vote clear on top with 17. North Launceston's Tom Couch is just one vote behind with Brad Cox Goodyear, Bryce Walsh and Brody Palferman three votes back. Just one year ago, the Hobart Chargers were in dire financial straits and in danger of folding. But following an incredible turnaround of fortunes, club president David Bartlett has revealed just how positive the future looks for the club. Not many knew just how bad things were looking from the inside. This time last year, you know, the club was about $97,000 in debt um, and really the board had to make a decision then. Do we fold up or do we give it one more shot and try something new? Staring into financial oblivion, the Chargers board made a brash call. There's no doubt about it, the move to the Doon Entertainment Centre uh, was a calculated risk and we were betting on the fact that more Tasmanians would want to come and see basketball there. With crowd numbers growing by around 150 people at each game throughout the year, that bet looks to have paid off. Expect by the end of the season to have virtually eliminated all debt. Uh, we hope to have a small uh, cash surplus in the bank. Now that the bank balance is stable, the club president will use the off-season to chase a major sponsor, a national or international brand that's keen to join the Chargers along their journey to becoming NBL ready within three years. Uh, back when Paul Lennon was Premier and Paula Root was Minister, they signed Mars as our sponsor for a potential AFL club, committed a million dollars a year if Tasmania got an AFL uh, licence and it's the sort of model that I want to look at. Around 3,000 are expected at the deck this Friday night when the Chargers take on Dandenong in their conference elimination final. And while that's a vast improvement from the days at the Hobart Sports Centre, Bartlett believes the club is only starting to scratch the surface. That, um, I reckon, is about half what we'd get if we had a regular NBL team playing here. Tasmanian cyclist Will Clark has crashed out in stage four of the Colorado Classic. Clark had two laps to go in the race when he slipped on a turn, forcing the rest of the peloton to swerve around him. An onboard GoPro also captured the spill. Clark had no broken bones but needed more than 10 stitches in his right hand. Good evening. Hobart 16 today, Launceston, Burnie and Devonport recording 17, while St Helens and Friendly Beach is our top today with 18 degrees. Mount Bob's our best rainfall with a 6 millimetre total as a passing front did that. And fairly quickly today, the showers did though continue over the west. Wynyard, Campania and Flinders Island all 17. King Island and Bushy Park 16, Lowhead and Strawn 15. Now the frontal cloud did move over our region with another band over the southern part of the mainland. Low pressure systems to the south of WA has cloud spiralling there. Some low 
low-lying cloud pushing over far north Queensland. Mostly sunny today and once that cloud moved off the east it was fine in the east with more clouds streaming over the west and south late in the afternoon. Tomorrow a vigorous cold front approaches Tasmania leaning back along the South Australian coast and those lows remain south of the bight. A high pressure ridge sits over the northeast of the nation. Winds turning nor nor'westly at 20 to 30 knots tomorrow and around more to the northeast at similar speeds later in the day swells to three metres in western and southern waters. Strong wind warning for waters between St Helens Point and Stanley and a small craft wind alert for the lakes. Tuesday in Hobart, bit of rain on the way. Four overnight, 16 tomorrow, 14 for Adventure Bay, a morning frost for Taralea, followed by rain and a top of 12. Launceston, rain with a possible late storm, 15 the top, chance of a storm two for Devonport, 14 and 16 for Bridport with that same forecast. For Burnie, rain, a possible storm, 15, 15 for Strawn, 15 for Marawar, all with that similar forecast. And for St Helens tomorrow, rain and a possible late storm, 15 the top, very popular, 16 for Swansea, white mark, a possible storm with some wet weather, 15 the maximum. On Wednesday, showers over the north, west and far south, and maybe elsewhere in the afternoon. Showers into Thursday as well, more frequent though over the west, and mostly fine over the central and north, with possible showers elsewhere on Friday, and some hail expected, with snow to 300 metres. Showers easing from Perth tomorrow, rain also for Adelaide, Melbourne and Canberra, a cloudy 24 in Sydney, mostly fine and sunny, and 27 in Brisbane. Mostly clear in Hobart, 11 at the moment, 12 degrees in Launceston and 11 degrees right now in Devonport. And what a Monday you've had, Joe. Supermarket, lamb cutlets on special, half price. You load up and deny us all the chance of getting any. I Thanks. I swooped. I swooped. I took them all. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's all from the news team for now. I'm going home for my lamb cutlets. See you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.